everybody. It's Michelle here with Angel Souls. Thank you so much for coming this week and hanging out with me. If you're looking for a way to come and grow spiritually with other people, a really great community, join me every week and every day here on YouTube at Angel Souls. Now, before we get into the message and the cards, I want to announce that I do have a bright session coming up. It's a live event where we get to talk face to face and I am going to be a part of the Seize the Summer campaign. So it's June 6th, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. And we're gonna be talking about raising our frequency, setting our intentions with the angels, being in alignment and important things. So make sure you check out that link in the description box below. Get your ticket because the seats are limited. So there's that. Of course, we have Patreon where I'm putting extra messages up. Just need a dollar to get started over there and you get extra content. Of course, I have Gumroad, Substack. I have my first chapter of my book over at Substack. So all that information is in the description box below. I do want to take a moment here and talk about personal readings. There's an interesting thing in this field where if you're a part of any sort of esoteric art, people put you into the same category. And so over the past nine years of doing this professionally, I have had people come to me and expect readings to be done in person because that's what they're used to. I've had, I had one person expect me to drive up to Denver to give her a reading, even though that wasn't how I outlined things on my website. She thought she was going to get special treatment. I've had people <laughs> do ridiculous things. I got stories, but people tend to come to me and want these sort of very surface level fortune telling type readings. These are angelic readings. Where would anybody get that angels are going to sit there and play fortune tellers? Like they're not. They give guidance. They give guidance that doesn't interfere with human free will. So what happens with these readings when you come to me for a personal reading, we're going to tap into your soul's contract. Where are you on your soul's path? You know, like what are you supposed to be learning right now? So you can come with your questions of why am I getting stuck? What am I missing here? You know, this is going on in my life that really bothers me. What's the deeper part of that? That's what we give readings on. Okay. Not does he love me? Let me save you all a lot of time with a lot of these readings out there. He loves you so much. He's just scared and it's just not the right time. You're welcome. So if you want to come and get, <laughs> yeah. And if you're not into deep spiritual, when I say deep spiritual growth, I'm not sitting here as a practitioner going, I got it all figured out and I'm going to guide you. I'm showing up going, I know this is a mess and we're all making mistakes. Do you want to form a community and we guide each other? And you know, we have a support system here as we go through this. And I am an angel medium, so I can bring through angelic messaging to pass along to people. That's what I'm doing here. Okay. So if you're not somebody who can go deep, if you're somebody who's like, this is so not interesting. If you're not going to tell me whether I get that car or not, the answer is no. Why? You got a bad attitude about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how that goes. <laughs> Does he love me? <laughs> See the previous comment. Uh, am I going to get that job? You know, all that stuff because you're just on the surface level of life. This may not be the right channel for you. You're welcome to be here, but just <laughs> know what this is before you come in here. And especially if you're going to get a personal reading, know what you're signing up for. Okay. So there is that this weird thing has formed where people now wait to put in their reading request until I announce I'm ahead of schedule. What happens then? A flood of people come in and there are people who wait sometimes days or weeks before they come in for their request. And then they're asking a few days after their request is in, when am I going to get my reading? And I, <laughs> that's, just, that's just a personal pet peeve of mine. I'm not saying it's logistical. It irritates me. Okay. I don't like it. And it mostly on my end is just because it puts pressure on me. Like I am working my tail off to get this flood of clients taken care of. And now somebody's complaining because they just put their, you know, reading in two days ago and they're expecting it already. So when I say I'm running ahead of schedule, be real, <laughs> be realistic. If you waited even a few hours and it's okay, you know, and everybody's going to see the post right away, but just, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. Okay. I'm working on it. Please be patient. Okay. We need to have these discussions every once in a while because people, uh, and this is part of the, 
message for this week. Let's just go right into it. This is a nice segue. Angelsouls444.com for the personal readings. If you want to do that, and if you know what you're signing up for. Okay. So I always get prepped. <laughs> These messages kind of come in little by little until I'm ready to record. And one of the messages was to sit and evaluate um, where humanity is. And the message here is about a big backsliding. So we were talking in previous videos about the past two years, all the stuff that went on. And really, if you want to see it this way, it's a very human way of putting it. But it was sort of a test, right? How is humanity going to respond if faced with this? It was meant to bring us together, but it tore us apart. Very divided on everything. And when push came to shove, people didn't come together and help one another. Now, some of you are going to be like, that's not true. I'm talking in a grand way, in the larger, uh, you know, collective. Instead of coming together, people were getting into fights over toilet paper. Um, everyone was getting very, how shall I say, polarized. Um, very, it went deeper into the duality consciousness during that time. I will tell you, there is another thing that is coming. Wait for about October, November. I don't know that it's the same thing that we've been dealing with the past two years, but it's going to be something along those lines with other things going on too. And the more we backslide, and you know, one of the things that came up too is evidence, <laughs> evidence, you know, um, of this happening is look at what people gravitated towards, what went viral. There you go. We can understand social media, right? What went viral? People doing really silly things that made us laugh, that brought us joy. Well, that's understandable. We all want to laugh. We all want to, you know, <laughs> we all want to have a lighthearted moment. But when it came to spirituality and when it came to facing that test and seeing how much work we have to do when there was fear, uh, a beast in front of us. People hid in their ego. How do we see that? What, what does that look like? It's what I was talking about in the beginning of this video. Instead of going towards, okay, I, I see what triggers me. How can I heal that? Instead of maybe going towards therapy, I'm not a therapist. This is not a replacement for therapy whatsoever. But, you know, this is supposed to be a compliment to your therapy if this is the route you want to go. But instead of going down the road of, let me do a deep dive into my spirituality. Let me see where that pain is coming from. People went shallow, which is understandable. If you think I don't sit at the end of the day and look at funny videos and <laughs> even listen to certain read, like, there are plenty of re readers out there that I enjoy listening to, but I wouldn't listen to them if I was trying to really go through something serious, right? I mean, it's, it, it's just not that. That's, it doesn't make it bad. But we did see people not balancing out how they were approaching their spirituality, if I can put it that way, okay? So we weren't doing the work. We wanted to be told what to do. We wanted to be told it's going to be okay. In a way, spiritually speaking, we reverted back to this powerless place, to this victimhood. And that is um, one of the deepest illusions we can bury ourselves in. And I know for me, and I, I probably have shared this before, but during the past two years, there was plenty I was in denial about. And I finally, I was cracking. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you guys because I'm away. I was away from my family. Um, you know, I work from home anyway, so I was used to being by myself. But my business essentially is an emotional support business. And I was working harder than I ever have, but making less money. So like stability was not so great. And I was getting burned out. But in that and i also we had three family members pass away in a short period of time uh, i had several friends or you know family friends people that we knew passing away and i couldn't be home for the funeral so i was here by myself at that time 
I, I, yeah, I have told you guys that. I feel like that is a repeat. Sorry if it's a repeat for you. But <laughs> the reason why I'm bringing that up is because I got into that place where I was feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm tired. Where does my life go from here? You know, I was going through what everybody was going through. And I hung on to my spirituality, going within, um, doing what I could. And through the spirituality, and this is a big important thing for all of us to hear right now, through my spiritual practice, I started hitting up on these memories. And in my mind, that's what spirituality does. It will unlock things to make us feel safe about getting help. Now, it can help along the way too, but the mental body needs to be treated by somebody who treats the mental body. The physical body needs to be treated by someone who treats the physical body, a therapist or a doctor, right? You know, so again, I don't want to step on anybody's belief system. It's not to make anybody feel bad about how they believe, but what I ended up doing was going, okay, I know why I'm feeling powerless right now. I'm having this discovery about the kind of work that I do. Uh, and part of what I was doing for so many years I'm out here healing, you know, ideas of codependency, and I bet a lot of empathic people can relate to that, but I went into a very codependent business where people would come in, want me to fix their lives for them. You know, I get those kind of, not every client is like that, obviously, but um, I would have clients like that who, you know, again, some of them, especially during the past two years, they weren't trying to be codependent. They were really going through something very, very scary and they saw me as having the answers. And I was there and I was, you know, we were going back and forth and trying to make them feel good about it. But that these were very troubling times. And so it wasn't like one or two coming in and, and needing that. We're talking hundreds. Hundreds. And I'm one person. And I'm not trying to say like, oh, I'm a victim. Feels sorry for me. No, no, no. <laughs> Don't go down that road. That's not it. I'm going somewhere with this. I know I'm making a long point here. But the point is, is that when that happened, I started realizing what was still, you know, that old programming, it was still running in the background, taking my energy. And I've been very open about having gone into therapy, talking about, um, you know, certain things from childhood. I got to, again, we all have to be careful about what we're saying. We're so limited in our, here in the U.S., we have freedom of speech, but not on social media. But, um, you know, trauma events that happened when I was a kid, when I was in my 20s, um, the harassment I experienced in the workplace, you know, things like that. It just all accumulated. And finally, I went and got therapy and I started working on that. Okay. So that is the kind of thing that if we haven't, I'm not saying that you needed to end up in therapy, but I'm saying if you haven't faced whatever your script is, whatever that, um, you know, we as humans, we, we make these scripts to come in and live out. If you haven't lived through the lesson that you set up for yourself, if you keep running away from it, if we as a humanity keep shifting backwards every time something tough comes up in our face, we have to look at what's behind that, okay? Now, for everybody, it's different. What we saw was a huge problem with self-centeredness. So there's something about our self-preservation mode that has become broken. It's very broken. And some people maybe get hurt by people who are very self-centered, and so they go the exact opposite way and become enablers. They become very codependent or whatever, they become the people pleasers because if I don't please people, it's dangerous and I'll get some backlash from that. And here we go. Here's another division. <laughs> right? And that's what we're in the middle of right now, guys. It's, it's not the whole picture. It's just this piece of the message, right? So if we're not looking at ourselves, if we're not distancing ourselves, now I want to be careful with this. It gets tricky because we're kind of in a way judging. If someone is obviously a narcissist or someone is obviously Machiavellian, if someone is using others or, you know, whatever, and they keep making you feel bad about yourself, it's empowering to go, I'm going to set a boundary and I'm going to reserve my energy for me. Conversely, you have people out there who hear a message like this and they mimic Right? They're trying to mimic being the victim or mimic trying to go through their spiritual growth. Like, 
again, guys, it gets tricky because we might be judging someone unfairly. We're learning how to do this and it's going to be messy. But you might have somebody who, let's say, is a toxic person, just kind of generically (laughs) calling them a toxic person. And they're coming out and saying, all you do is judge me and you owe me an apology for this, this, and this. You feel me? I know I'm kind of talking around this, but I know a lot of you out there get what I'm saying here. What's real? What's fake? And all of us, since 2012 especially, (laughs) where it became trendy to be spiritual, we saw when this, these past two years happened, we saw the fake and the phony. And unfortunately, we are in a space where real is getting shoved to the back. What I want to pass along to you today And I'll tell you right now, I'm very purposely like taking my time saying this because people who have a, you know, short attention span or think that there's nothing of value here, they've already cut out. They've already cut out and they're going to miss this. And they are the ones who are going to crumble because they're not trying. They're not waking up to, they're not healing. Okay. So if we can get into this space of going, first, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. I see phony and I know to back up. I know to not engage with that. Or where have I been delusional to myself? I am trying. I'm trying so hard. I'm trying so hard. I'm trying so hard. But I'm not taking real action towards what I'm trying to do. Okay. I am seeing it less and less now. So this is actually a little point of promise, okay? Less and less in the comments where people are being enablers. I got to watch what I say because I'll get a million emails saying, you were talking about me, weren't you? I know you were talking about me. There's that self-centeredness and half the time I don't even know who they are. So how can I be talking about you if I don't know who you are, (laughs) right? But there is something short-circuiting, obviously, And we are in a place where eh, we got to talk about the icky. Okay, talk about the icky. Going through the motions of spirituality doesn't make you spiritual. Being able to pick up a tarot deck and do a reading doesn't, it depends on your intention behind it. There are people on YouTube who just picked up, you know, a tarot deck a couple of weeks ago. Saw that it was profitable on YouTube and came in and started doing it. And because they are appealing to the base nature of people and people are scared, they gravitate towards that. So it's a good indicator of where, where we're functioning from. Okay. So as much as we can without judgment, I know I'm like, here's the impossible (laughs) thing. As much as we can without judgment, we really need to start taking accountability for our own stuff. Where are we being delusional? Where are we making excuses for ourselves? Maybe you do need a therapist to help you out with that. Um, Where do I think that I'm above everybody else because I'm in my spiritual practice and they're not? The moment someone is judging someone for not being in their spiritual practice, let that be a red flag to you. They're not in it for the right reasons. This is where people can pose as the light, but they're doing the dark, right? And it's not seen. It's not seen. It's manipulation. It is, uh, you know, all the stuff. (laughs) I don't need to sit here and tell you about all that. You already know. But uh, we're, we're in a dire place right now because I know I'm a little heartbroken. I feel a little sick, too, as this was coming up. And uh, we're not advancing as much as we need to. And it doesn't help when we have spiritual practitioners out there as well who are saying, this is so heavy. This is so negative. Be in the light. Watch it. Watch it. That's like saying, I want to be really, really rich. So I'm just going to sit and think positively and it'll just come to me. No, it won't. <laughs> You're in a physical existence. You can sit and get the dream all you want, but if you don't you know, put your fingers to the keyboard to create something or pick up a paintbrush or, you know, start that business or whatever, put your application in for that, that promotion. It doesn't happen. There's a physical part of this as well. And this is what the angels are coming in here and really, really, really going, wake up humanity, wake up. 
because we took a dark turn. We took a dark turn. And let me just say, I was thinking this too. And I think I even said it to somebody. I said, I would, because <laughs> we were talking about uh, social media and how social media can really be used for good or it could be used for bad. And I said, you know, I, I use social media for my business and I would rather have 30,000 subscribers who really want to come and we learn from each other, right? You know, we, we provide a safe space here for people to um, be open and discuss what they're going through and we figure it out together than to have a million where there could be a lot of narcissists in there. Some sociopaths, you know, like <laughs> it's real guys. It's real. And I'm taking a long time to talk about it. And I want to lay this down too. The only people who are going to be bothered by this message are narcissists and their enablers or sociopaths and their enablers. Everybody else is going to go, mm -hmm. <laughs> I know what you're saying and thank God you're saying it, right? So let's be careful of thinking that we made it. Or, um, there, there are some dark, uh, dark, toxic people out there posing as the light and taking pride in that. And that's one of the beautiful parts of it. They're not hiding. As long as you know what it looks like, it's obvious. And then it becomes kind of embarrassing to watch them act out because, <laughs> They think they're fooling everybody. That's, I think I've used this example before too, where it's like the kid comes up with powdered sugar all over her face and she says, I didn't touch the powdered donuts. Uh, <laughs> there's evidence right there. But we're, um, you know, all kidding aside, we're in, we're in a space, guys. <sighs> um, does this mean we should give up? Absolutely not. But don't be surprised when a lot of spiritual practitioners start bowing out and what I mean by that is that there are a lot of people who were called to come in and try to help and they laid the help down and it wasn't accepted now those people are free from that contract and they can go on and do whatever else that might be more stable for them or that they can you know express in a different way or whatever I got the message that a lot of soul contracts, this chapter at least, it's done. Now for some people it was like, you know what, my heart isn't really into this, I'm out. Or I came in, I did the work that I was guided to do, now I'm going a different direction. What do you need to do with that? Find your purity, find your authenticity. I'm sick of social media, aren't you? I'm sick of influencers, aren't you? I'm sick of people telling me how my life is supposed to look, <laughs> how my body is supposed to look, all those things, aren't you? Spend some time and I'll be doing this with you, okay? And so if you guys wanna leave comments and we can go through this process together of really looking at what feels worn out what feels tired, what feels, you know, like be careful where, notice this too, because I just got the message of watch where you blame too, because there was a whole big trend of that. So there's wanting to have, there's wanting to have truth out there, but there's also then going into the energy of blame. If it wasn't for this organization, we would, we're the power source. When we plug into something as a collective, it lights up. When we pull the plug on it, you don't have to be loud about it. You just do it. Pull the plug and say, I'm not, I'm not going to play into that anymore. This is not what we would expect. It's not going to look the same either that, that you're used to. I'm not going to look the same way that you're used to perhaps. So what this looks like also is, you know, you might look at someone, let's say what I hear a lot is like, oh, that person is an addict and they're, oh my God, you know, and they say it with this disdainful thing. It gets tricky. You don't want to be an enabler. But maybe if you try to understand where that person who has that struggle is coming from, you know, I mean, now, 
now it's going to be different. It's weird. There's a complete reversal going on here. It's like the people you thought were the gurus who were the real spiritual people, whatever. You realize they were doing really dark things and putting messaging out there for you to play into. Okay. There's a whole trend on TikTok right now where I think it's called the look good for me prank where some toxic masculine, I said it, you don't like it, here it is, toxic masculine, okay, tells his woman to look good for him or something, I don't know, I, there's only so much I can take with that stuff, but anyway, <laughs> and the girl comes in, and the whole prank is that he says, I told you to look good, I told you, and she starts to look worried, oh no, I don't have the approval of my man, Brr, I, again, I can't relate, <laughs> I'm, I'm made up of different stuffs, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. But when I saw that, uh, even now talking about it, like the tingles are going up the back of my skull. Uh. <laughs> uh, blah, blah, blah. Should I make a whole other video about that? I don't know. I might not feel like it later. But let me just say, uh, uh, girls, why are you putting up with it? Why? Are you, why? Why? Or anybody. Anybody. If, if. You know, some, if you're a man and someone's like, you're supposed to look like this, this, and this, uh, don't put up with that. Okay. And no men out there, we, we know that you're not all terrible. As a matter of fact, if I find one of y'all who's not toxic masculine, look out, look out. I'm going to love you until you're sick of my face. Okay. <laughs> like that's what we're, we're trying to like shift. And there are lots of men out there on TikTok, you know, doing commentary on that and, Thank you for that, okay? But there are things like that that it's like this subtle messaging. How to lose weight for summer. I'm going to be fat for summer. What? Yeah, I'm going to be that big girl under the umbrella. I guess. <laughs> Me in the sun. It's like salt on a snail. Like, don't do it. <laughs> And me and son don't get along that well. Anyway, there, this is, I've talked, what, uh, a half hour, okay? Now, there are going to be some people with very toxic behavior. Their expectations roll in their eyes because they, they're, they're shallow. They're shallow. They can't listen. They can't listen to what another person is trying to bring up, okay? And that's the other thing, too, our attention span. Non-existent. All right, so we got Archangel Michael in here. We've got Archangel Jeremiah. Oh, I dropped a card. Hang tight. Okay, here we are. Um, and Jeremiah is all about stop and review. Stop and look at what you've already been through. Okay, because now, again, that broken self-preservation point of us has us going in every direction, short-circuiting. And I, I want to make it clear one of my favorite things to watch on TikTok would be the singing bowl people. Adore you all. I go to sleep <laughs> to that. God bless you. Thank you so much. Um, so, you know, that's a beautiful gift that people are offering. Um, you know, readers who are helping people, they come from a good intention place and they're helping people through their surface level things with the intention that they move on and go deeper to clear that away. Beautiful. Thank you so much. But then there are other people who are just trying to jump on, you know, spiritual practices or whatever to make money because it's becoming trendy on social media. All right. So the card that fell right out, innocence. We have gotten sucked into this world and we're going down the wrong road. People are, I don't know. It, it's just, we, we did it wrong. <laughs> I hate to tell you guys, we did it wrong. And there has to be some sort of reset. Now, the way we reset is by being honest with ourselves. Got to check my microphone. My shirt's getting all bungy, bungy scrunchy. Okay. Don't touch the mic. Fabric. Okay. Innocence. Dear God and angels, thank you for helping me see all of that. Wait, that all of your qualities of pure love and light are reflected within me and all others. Help me embrace my God-given innocence so that I may be at peace. This is that kind of thing where your dreams change. Oh, I wanted to be a famous author. What really matters to you now? I want to be safe and healthy and I want my loved ones to be safe and healthy and I want to be able to take care of myself and I just want to have good connection with other human beings. That's tapping back into, you know, not needing validation from a bigger society or a big bigger portion of the society, but knowing that your worth 
is inherent, <laughs> that you don't need to prove yourself, that you don't need to go out and impress others in order to be valuable. You created this situation. We all created this, okay? And you have the power to change it. This is a huge message. This is it right here. Thank you for letting me lean on your strength and for reminding me of my personal power. Please guide me to manifest and heal according to divine will, creating peace and blessings for everyone involved. This is what people are not realizing, okay? Or th this I've said before millions of times, not millions, but a lot. <laughs> Where somebody says, oh, you know what? I'm going to get out of this relationship. Let that person go be someone else's problem. And maybe they're coming out of an abusive relationship. That energy is going to slam you times 10. Why? You just wished ill upon a stranger. Do you know how common, it is, how common it is for people to say that about other people? Mind boggling. Absolutely mind boggling. Or somebody who's like really <laughs> absolutely, or somebody who's incredibly manipulative and they see everybody is beneath them and they're like, what's wrong with that? Clearly. <laughs> I'm above all, right? So we need to kind of stop and reset and really, um, it's gonna be different for everybody. Again, you have a community here, you have me, you know, we can help each other through this. What do we need to admit to ourselves? You know, where are we resentful? Where is our innocence being taken away? I started to get really rattled and upset when I saw that, Fake spiritual practitioners, people who do carry a lot of dark energy, were coming in and posing as the light. Wolves in sheep's clothing. And I'm watching people run to them. Do you know what that means? It means they're a frequency match. You know what else that means? We're in deep shit. If that's where everyone's going, if people are not waking up to that and I got disheartened and I got resentful and I, I've had plenty of conversations with God. I've had plenty of conversations with angels and guides and said, what is this? What is this now? I don't think that I'm above anybody. Listen, I can do a whole video on all my, the dumb things that I do in my life. <laughs> Pretty open about it. Okay. <laughs> Maybe not that interesting, but anyway, God knows I'm not, you know, perfect at all. But I was, I was always doing this work under hope and thinking, you know, if we could come together, all of us and, um, really make some real change in this world. And I'm seeing evidence that it wasn't happening. And I started thinking back, especially when I first got on YouTube, how much competition there was and, um, I mean, it was like Yellowstone. <laughs> Where's all this conniving? I'm going to win out. I'm going to get this territory and I'm going to tear this person down. I'm going to sabotage this person. These are supposed spiritual practitioners and throwing shade in their videos and stuff. I know you might say, well, you, you're throwing shade too. I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad. I just see a problem and I think we need to wake up to it to see what the heck's going on here. Okay. But as long as we keep running to wherever we're a match, you know, we've got to stop and look at that. How many of us have found ourselves quite alone, wanting to be alone? I, I literally the other day <laughs> was like, I'm just going to go sit on my balcony because I don't, I don't know. I can't do people right now. I can't. I, I don't want to. I don't want to drive down the street and have somebody almost run into me and then make hand gestures at me, even though they're the ones that just broke the law. Um, uh, okay. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, you're on the right path. This is a message that everything we're talking about, as long and drawn out as this might be, tough. Michelle, the YouTube rules are, I don't care about any social media rules. This is not serving us. And that's it people we have this thing that we're trying to do but then we're trying to fit it into the existing uh structures and make them fit make them work within that structure this doesn't fit there that's where i'm going to put it 
See if I get taken down or get a strike or something, but whatever. Um, anyway, <laughs> you're on the right path. So this is exactly what we need to be talking about right now. Archangel Michael, I call upon you now. Thank you for giving me loud and clear guidance that I easily understand. Thank you for uh, motivating me and filling me with courage and confidence to make helpful life changes. We need to talk about desperation. We need to talk about neediness. People who come in and they're constantly playing the victim so people will feel sorry for them or playing the victim so people will do things for them. Acting helpless. I cannot believe it. Like I almost fall over every time somebody falls for it. And then conversely, there are people out there who are in real trouble and they start to talk and people shut them down. That's that darkness. People, the way I'm hearing it now is like people kind of get attracted to the buzz. They get, you know, when you're around somebody who's a little, a little dark and they got that buzzy kind of energy. That's why there's a trope that women like the bad boys. They're a little dangerous, a little buzzy. It feels a little exciting. It feels a little ball, you know. But if you, if, <laughs> if you are in a space where you're trying to heal, you're facing the tough stuff as a human being, um, and you're going through your spiritual development, that stuff does not excite you anymore. None of it does. And what's more, um, anything dangerous doesn't excite you anymore. Oh, Michelle, what are you saying? That people who are adrenaline junkies are not spiritual? I, that's exactly what I'm saying. Why are you jumping out of a plane? Okay. Okay. Now, maybe this isn't fair for everybody who does that. <laughs> I'm thinking of, that can be a sign though. That can be a sign. People who um, are careless about others' safety. Let's say road, you know, driving. If you're careless with your own life and with others, you're disconnected. Again, that self-preservation thing has malfunctioned in, the, in a different direction, but you're also putting other people in danger. Or, you know, I live in Colorado, I'll be out on the trail and maybe that day I decided to go up kind of high and the trails become like this narrow, maybe not, maybe more like this narrow. And here comes someone on a bike, not controlling their speed and there's nowhere for me to go. And then they look at me like I'm in their way. You know, where we're supposed to share, share the trail. So the adrenaline junkie thing, you may not like that. I don't really care. I'm not holding back on this stuff. You know me. If, if I can't give it to you real, then I'm not going to give it to you at all. Okay. And if you're listening to this and you feel like you need to unsubscribe, please do it. I want to clean up. I'm done. I'm done. I don't, I don't need it. <laughs> I'm not going to give my time to people who cannot respect me or be caring and loving to other people in this community. Use your imagination and you'll see the answer. Dear God, thank you for granting me the wisdom and creativity to see your miracles in new and unexpected ways. I gratefully and gracefully accept and appreciate your help. So they're saying the answers are there. The answers are there. We've been told numerous times and we're not listening. I can't, guys, there's another thing coming. Is it going to be as bad as before? I don't know. I don't think so. But I think coming on the heels of what we've already been through, people are going to panic again. I mean, essentially, they're giving us as many chances as they can give us. If you think that we're not really in a battle of good and evil, waking up isn't enough. <laughs> because a lot of people out there are claiming to be awakened, but... You know, I mean, there are examples all over in the news. Think about people who are coming off as super spiritual, were super, you know, into nature and whatever, and then they do something horrible. You know exactly what news story I'm talking about from what, a few months back? Come on. You would look at those people, especially around here in Colorado, you'd look at them and think that they're just like cool and laid back. <laughs> like, no, that's not what was going on. Okay. Knight of Gabriel. Okay. Confident, enthusiastic, courageous, charismatic. Gabriel's all about communication. Okay. And that with the Michael energy is all about seeing the truth, understanding the truth, and also understanding what your true passion is. What really lights you up? What really is the priority in your life? Now you might say, you know what? I want to be single right now because I'm working on my stability or I'm working on my healing. And society will tell you you're supposed to hurry up and get with someone. Why? <laughs> 
go look at the stats on marriages. Sorry, married people. God bless you. Okay, but not everybody is so lucky as you if you're in a great marriage. You know what I'm saying? Or, and I'm sure you could agree with this, a lot of you out there, maybe, um, that people go in, they go rushing in to relationships without working on the things that would, you know, make them open and available within a relationship. Okay. So this is time to take action, great passion for a cause, instinctively knowing just what to do. Okay. We need to get passionate about not running other people. See, that's the other thing that started happening. The control. Oh, I'm going to be offended if you say this. You have to see it this way. I don't care what you got to say. I'm right. No, 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 no. Uh, makes me want to lay down and take a nap. <laughs> All, right. All right. Peace. We have to transform so we can get into peace. And peace needs to be the priority. Now, that doesn't mean that because we have there's a toxic dynamic that happens whether it's in a friend group, in family, sweep everything under the rug. Don't make waves. Don't be the, you know, and I'm not saying go in and pick a fight with someone. But if you have somebody who is not healthy and they are really being cruel to you, and I'm not saying people who are making themselves out to be victims all the time. My family does this, this, and this, and you just see everything that they do is wrong. Again, see how it gets tricky? It, not everything is black and white here. We got to take every situation as it comes and sit with it. That's why this needs to get tuned up. Check out my event on Bright. We're going to be talking about that. You need to be in alignment. That way your instincts are on. Your instincts are on point. That way when you come up on someone and they're like, oh, they've got a sad story. Maybe you start getting a little red flag there. It says, okay, they're just giving me a sob story to pull me in versus, okay, this person really does need help. Okay, and it's hard to perfect. I don't think any human has ever perfected it, okay? But we try, right? So peace, Archangel Osriel, release the past. The way we used to do things has to go away. It has to go away, whether we do that uh, as individuals and especially as a collective, all right? The stuff we used to accept is no longer acceptable. There is a more enriching future coming. Let go and let God. We're in trouble here, guys. Michelle, you're, this message is so heavy, then get off my channel. You didn't hear me? Does that, does that feel scary that someone actually doesn't care whether they're popular on social media? Welcome to the new way, honey. Okay? <laughs> That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Okay? So we're not going to let anything steal our peace. Use the platforms to speak truth. Whatever your truth is. Leave it out there for others' consideration, but don't use it for validation, okay? All right, we're going to do our color card, y'all. How long have y'all been hanging out with me? 45 minutes. Let's see if I can edit that down. <laughs> okay, I've had to cough a couple of times, so you'll see those edits. We have brown. We've got to get grounded. Establish boundaries. The number is 12. For us to get into our wisdom, for us to really make some important forward movement this is what we need to do establish those boundaries and get grounded because here's the thing a recession coming yeah probably now, i'm not saying that from like a financial professional standpoint i am not a financial or economics professional i'm talking about it from an intuitive person why from a spiritual aspect the greed always gets us the greed always gets us. I could go on and on. I've gone on and on this video already. I can't even believe it. I sat down going, this will be a quickie video. And then stuff just started pouring out. <laughs> Never know. Never know until I sit down. Um, but yeah, there's a recession coming. And if you sit there and go, I'm scared. I'm scared. There's your proof that you haven't done the work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and all of us, you know, on the surface level, there's going to be some fear there. But if you've done your spiritual practice, if you have understood some deeper wisdom about you as a human being, you know this is another part of the script that's going to be playing out. And you know, if I have to live off of dandelions, I'll learn how to do it. Let your dandelions grow in your yard, guys. Don't put pesticides on them. Let those grow, okay? So, again... There's all these things coming up. I'm sorry. I feel like <laughs> it's like pouring out. But, you know, knowing that if I don't have this 
big, beautiful house and I have to downsize. It'll be the cutest little house you've ever seen. That sort of thing. Okay. So don't, don't allow a narrative to scare you or in, well, and, and also don't go the opposite way where it's like, um, you know, I'm not scared of anything. I don't think it's real. And then you don't take proper precautions to make sure that you are covered. You feel me? That's, that's all intellectual stuff trying to pull it, pull it all together. That's why we have to be in alignment. That's why we have to be right here because everything I'm trying to put into words, it's not really something that's translatable. It's something that you have to tap into your instincts and into your heart to understand, okay, this is going to be going on outside of me. And you know what? Yeah. As a human, I might feel a little stress, but ultimately I know I'm resourceful. Ultimately, you know, I can lean on myself. I can figure it out. If I can't live the way that I'm used to living, then I shall get used to another way of living and perhaps I will be happier. So comment down below, have, you know, discussions with one another about this, you know, show us that you're thinking or let us know what you're thinking. Process this. Now I want to make it clear. This isn't about debating one another. Okay. That's in, that's intellectualizing it. You're not in touch with your heart. Be balanced in what you put out there. And um, if you have genuine questions, okay. If you are just trying to get attention for yourself, you'll be blocked. I, I've got that tuned up pretty well. And I don't take on enablers either. Sounds tough? Too bad. Enjoy your week. I'm sending you all so much love and take care.